Gorilla D going 10-8. What's up people? Let's build a clandestine simplex repeater. In my case this is going to be used for my family and myself when the communication systems around here uh, goes down and I'm going to try to do this as legal as I can and I'm going to take you through the steps here so what I winded up purchasing about two three years ago was this Argent Data simplex repeater and Com Prepper has a video about seven minutes long it goes into uh, an introduction of this device here he calls it the uh, a poor man's repeater and for what you get here it it's low price and is definitely a, a poor man's repeater but it's got a lot of capabilities that would be beneficial to families uh, little groups uh, hunting clubs uh, what have you and what I'm going to build is a permanent installation semi permanent installation that is mobile small uh, concealable and the biggest bang for the buck uh, with this device that would fit my family's uh, criteria for a repeater out there so this is what comes in the mail you just get this box here with the with the Argent Data uh, manual so there's a few ways that you could power this up you could power it up by interfacing a couple of pins here on the 8 pin port and they call this a RJ45 port the same cap uh, plug that's used for computer networks and uh, networking cabling that this is the same plug you could put in up to 12 volts I think it goes a little bit more but I'm not sure but I'm, I'm using battery voltage uh, which for me will be 12 volts you could put it in this way you could use the jack here for 12 volts and sometimes uh, I'll be I, could use one of these wall warts that's 12 volts or less to power this up or two AA batteries which makes uh, 3 volts roughly so just for simplicity how quick this is to interface I'm gonna go ahead and, and just off the cuff just build it here's my cable or my batteries It comes defaulted with a standard load where, where it's ready to go as soon as you get it. I have the cover but I'm not going to put it on. This time I'm going to use a VX7R as my uh, radio to interface with this. And Yesu has this cable here to plug into the port on top the port on top that goes to your speaker mic or, or what have you or other devices so this pretty much is a proprietary to them this plug right here it's waterproof but it breaks it out into these uh, stereo uh, foam plugs here you got 2.5 millimeters and 3.5 millimeter hole just screw it in now you have your pigtail here to uh, put your transmit uh, audio and your receive audio and your push to talk. That's push to talk is uh, what you actually initiate the transmit by pushing the key on the side there. The Argent Data, you just plug it in. This cable here comes from Argent Data already made. This is their, uh, I think they call this the universal cable or standard cable but it works with uh, Yesu so this is what I purchased this was seven dollars it's a lot cheaper to go ahead and buy the cable that, that comes directly from Barnage Data because it comes with the this plug here already made and the connector the RJ45 connector which is an 8 pin computer networking plug and that plugs in right in this spot right here. Um, an amateur radio operator, so I could use 145.25 VHF frequency. I have the uh, volume mid mid range. 
Now I just mate these these plugs with the pigtail. So I'm, I'm doing this single-handedly here, so bear with me. There's one, and I believe that's the transmit port right there. Yeah, it is the transmit port. And the bigger 3.5 millimeter foam plug is your receive port. That's interconnected. Turn on the unit. You got an on and off switch here. Now as you look at the unit, as you look at the box uh, in this configuration here, you see this little red block there. That's a series of four switches. You got one, two, three, four. The, the farthest one to the right, that indicates whether to use a combined transmit audio and push the talk signal on one wire or if you turn it off, it disengages that and, and you use a sort of a relay to activate the push to talk so that'll be an extra wire that you would need that's that is used to to interface that to a mobile a repeater uh, a base station or an older HT uh, handy talkie that has the older technology that needs a physical contact to make it push to talk it's sort of like the same signal you use to press the side button to make this transmit. On modern radios uh, like the Yesus or the Wuxons or the TYTs, uh, they share the same line with the transmit line. And I have this video uh, called how to interface any radio to any device that kind of spells it out uh, what exactly is happening. So I won't go through it in this video. But for this particular interface, I'm using the Yesu radio. The Yesu radios does use that technology where it shares the transmit line with the push to talk line. So that would have to be activated on the switch here. The other switch is this for transmit audio so you could uh, adjust the audio being pumped into the radio so everybody else could listen to the radio at a consistent level depending on the radio that you interfaced it with. So that's all configured. I think I'm ready to go. I may I may need to configure the receive audio being pumped into the box here. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, now notice the LEDs. The yellow should be on consistently and then the uh, green LED here, light, should uh, flicker as you talk. Test 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It sounds like crap because I got the uh, the charging base uh, charging it, so it's kind of interfering a little bit. So, and you adjust that level by changing the by adjusting the volume control here. So I'm gonna put it in real low and see what happens. Test five, four, three, two, one. It's flickering just a little bit. Test five, four, three, two, one. It was even lower. So I'm going to go ahead and go low. Test 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Didn't even register it. So I'm going to crank it up all the way high and see what that sounds like. Test 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That sounded like crap. I'm going to go midpoint, more like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock around there. Test 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That sounds a little bit better. So you got to play around with that volume control, the speaker volume, to make sure you get the proper levels going into the other radios in the, in the field. So that's probably the only adjustments that you really got to pay attention. And once you have all this all set up, walk away and have some fun. So as you can see, you can see the, uh, the application that this device could provide you uh, out in the field. Since I do a lot of camping out here, sometimes I go alone. 
uh, I have contact with my family, which I will test out later when everything's built. So yeah, you got your your power, this that. This configuration right here, where it will last you, I think maybe six hours. Uh, I don't know how long this will do on on AA batteries, but this would uh, last for a good three to six hours, depending on usage. Just put it on the hilltop and go away, and then you have uh, repeater operations. As you've seen from my other videos, this is the simplest configuration out there with the least amount of components. Uh, I don't need a duplexer. Here's my antenna that that'll be using, and later on this this will be interfaced with uh, with an external antenna to give me more range with a more efficient. Uh, antenna like a uh, a dipole half wave dipole or a gym slam or, or j pole antenna but since this, this is not simultaneously transmitting at the same time as it's receiving a signal it needs to receive your your transmission first record it and then transmit back out so this is doing receive record then transmit back out so it's sort of like you talking to somebody else on eight from HT to HT direct so there, there is no need for a duplexer because uh, by by nature it doesn't need it. it it does the separation you transmit and receive uh, either either one or the other not at the same time so it does not need a duplexer no tuning no expense no bulk no loss of of power and reception because it's going through the filters the duplexer so you go you, you got full uh, four watts coming out your antenna into your antenna and not being absorbed by a duplexer it's a simpler design smaller package to be put in a ammo can over there pretty soon so this is the basis of my family's re uh, repeater system. Uh, obviously I'm using a Yaesu VX7R uh, just for demonstrations and I'm legally able to use a ham light uh, frequency with this to, to test. What I chose to use for my family as far as radio service is GMRS. Uh, whenever I'm in position to test this fully and deploy it, I will get the license then but with the GMRS license I'm able to include my family without testing all I have to do is just pay the 80 bucks or whatever I think it lasts for five years I would have to look at the rules but uh, it's for five years I think and it covers your whole family your in-laws cousins distant cousins it's wide so in that one fell swoop my whole family is covered so uh, and I do that because my wife does not want to go through the uh, amateur radio licensing and studying for it and stuff like that. And I'm not going to force her to do it, of course not. So when a problem arises, like in that situation where I believe this is really beneficial to the safety and comfort of our family when something goes wrong, uh, I have to come up with another solution. And that's it. GMRS satisfy that requirement. With the license, uh, I could transmit more uh, up to 50 watts the HTs could transmit up to 5 watts so this cannot do no more than 5 watts anyway or a part 90 radio or these other radios cannot do no more than 5 watts so that's okay I'm covered GMRS you are able to use a repeater the rule says it must be a device that simultaneously repeats the traffic uh, in this case, it's not really simultaneously. It receives it, waits a little bit, and then transmit back out. But it doesn't have. It doesn't say anything about simplex repeaters. There's nothing that says anything about simplex repeaters. So I think I'm safe using a simplex repeater with the GMRS service. FRS cannot do that. Uh, Mirrors cannot do that. You could do that with the hams. So another reason why you should get a ham license is you have more capabilities with the ham license during peacetime. GMRS during peacetime is perfect for your family. They are legal. They could go under your license 
and, and you could use this for fun, camping, uh, something other than shit hitting the fan, WRL or disaster. It could be used for everyday uh, task. Hey, Gorilla Geek, get me some milk. The kids are hungry. You know, I get that over the radio and boom, I got the message and I go off and, and do my thing. Or in this area where I live at, there's a lot of dead spots as far as cell phones. I have communications with this in a wider area. So this is the reason why I'm choosing this platform here. And bear in mind, this is a prototype. I'm just going to build a prototype for testing purposes. It'll be de fully deployed in the configuration that I want. It'll be made with cheap, inexpensive materials to, uh, just for testing purposes. I'm going to build it all deploy it and then test it out for a uh, f uh, s snowy season because uh, the mountain that I'm going to put this on uh, gets snow and, and temperature swings from hot to cold and you name it so I want to test this in, in its environment that it is going to be placed in. This series of the personal repeater system that I'm building will be a pretty long series I'm going to try to chop it up into little pieces but in between the videos about this subject, I will intersperse other subjects from uh, questions I get from uh, subscribers and anybody that pretty much PMs me about a particular subject that it's best for me to do a video to explain uh, their question. Uh, for instance, uh, how to install a CB whip antenna. Uh, that will be sometime soon uh, by request. So uh, yeah, this is going to take a little bit, little bit of time, but it's going to be slow, methodical, and complete. Uh, interspersed with other subjects so just a warning so this has been a brief introductory on building and deploying a simplex repeater for you for your use on uh, the next few video in the next video would be problems that I faced a big mistake that I've made and in, so far you see me interface this with a Yesu VX7R best radio in the world just about or one of them and as you can see it works flawlessly right off the bat with with the proper cables and everything uh, next and the, the the radio that I'm actually going to use out up in the mountaintop to deploy would be a TYT radio that I featured in another video uh, that's going to be put up there because it's cheap if it gets stolen I'm not going to cry that much I will cry over this but not the TYT radio so that could take a beating up in the hilltop. It's a different wiring to this and I'm going to build from scratch an interface cable and show you the reason why that I made a mistake that, that damaged one of these units. VX7R cable which is sort of a Kenwood type plug. It's a standard Kenwood uh, plugging scheme uh, that fits the side of this here as well on the ocean and on the TYT but it's wired differently I winded up damaging one of my radios because I took it for granted and just plugged it in there anyway uh, without doing the proper checks so I'm gonna alleviate you guys from doing the same mistakes on the next video uh, it'll be interfacing one of these Chinese radios Gorilla Gate going 10-10